On today's show, we bring on recurring guest, Sens prospect, Stephen Halliday. The Disher tells us about adjusting from college hockey to pro hockey, dev camp, and looking ahead to his first NHL training camp. Plus a little talking tennis. All that and more on today's Locked On Sens. I'm Jake Sanderson. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators podcast. Your Locked On Senators. Your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome. You are locked on to the Ottawa Senators. The only daily podcast covering the Sens. On the outskirts of enemy territory, I'm Ross Levitan. Alongside Brandon Piller up in the Blue Mountains. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. This summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus every day. That's right. There's something for everyone every single day, all summer long. Just visit FanDuel.com to get started. You can also follow the show on social media. We're at Send Central on Twitter and LockedOn.Senators on Instagram. We're available everywhere you get podcasts. You can find us free and available on YouTube as well, where a like, comment, and subscription go a long way to helping the show grow. Today is Monday, July 29th, and Pilsy, the summer schedule is here, but we are still dishing out an amazing interview on today's show. Yeah, even though we're down from five shows a week to three, we still got great guests coming on. Stephen Halliday, recurring guest. He He's always so funny. He always starts off a little shy, and then we start getting some good answers out of him, and uh, we always ended up having a fun chat, so thanks to Halliday for joining us. I could talk hockey with this guy forever, and it really feels like that love and passion for the game is a big reason why he's been able to gain some valuable experience and an easy, our words, not his, transition to pro hockey, the way he was able to kind of use his high hockey IQ to put himself in positions where he doesn't always have to be the fastest guy on the ice because He's already thinking the game two, three steps ahead. But he's working on getting faster, Ross, as uh, you'll hear. He's spent a lot of time with Shelly, the uh, skating coach with the Ottawa Senators. So hopefully we see some more of that. Absolutely. We also had, I mean, this is, we're right in the off season right now. So not a whole lot of news and notes going on, but we always love seeing the Sens community represented. And I love what the Senators management team has been doing. We saw last week, Linus Allmark's family got their Sens jerseys. Well, Nick Jensen's wife, Jenner Jensen 12 on Instagram posted an adorable photo of their two children wearing number three Nick Jensen jersey. So love to see the excitement for both the Olmark and the Jensen families coming to Ottawa. Oh yeah, it's awesome. And uh, it's great that these jerseys are so nice. Uh, They always look good on the kids. The kids seem excited to show them. And I like the duality here. One of the kids is like pumped up and ready to go. And then just a cute smile from the other one. So two, two way defenseman, right? Absolutely. We'll see what's next for Nick Jensen. We do know that some consider him to be an X factor this season. Just to quickly go over our schedule coming up, we're going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday for the foreseeable future. Actually, I do know the future. It's six weeks that we will be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We already have a great interview coming for you next week with Hoyt Stanley. Just sat down with him couple citizens on Wednesdays and the next two Fridays, we're going to look back at the drafts six and five years ago. Feels like that's a good enough time to be able to evaluate properly in hindsight. So it's a really fun time to dig into these topics that we don't necessarily have time to give enough love to throughout the season. And I'm excited. We know we respect the calendar. It's been a great interview season so far. Plenty to go back and watch if you missed any of them. Like, look at the month we've just had, Pilsy. Like, if you look back and we talk about Dean Brown, like, how long does it feel like since we talked to to Dino? And then just going on from that, being able to get the stories from Oscar Pedersen, meet Gabriel Eliasson, have a chat with the head coach, David Bell, Matt Sogard, and Igor Sokolov, Stephen Halliday, those friends of the show, and then getting the captain, Brady Kachuk, on as well. So it's been awesome hearing these perspectives, these different stories, and we look forward to continuing that despite being down to three shows a week. Oh yeah. And that's, that's the best part of this time of the off season. Ross is usually everyone's kind of in a, in a chill state, not quite going to training camp or anything like that, but also far enough from the season that they're willing to talk and share some stories. So interview season, 
although obviously we love Sens hockey, is one of my favorite times because we get a lot of good stories. So the draft lookbacks are going to be the next two Fridays, and then we will begin Ring of Honor season after the next couple of weeks. So once we are fully into August, but let's not keep the people waiting. They're here to hear from Stephen Halliday. The guy made an absolute impact coming into the AHL, 12 assists in 17 games. I didn't want to tell, I didn't want to put him on the spot with this stat. And there is the caveat that it's with a minimum of four games played. There were some first round exits that, that had some good points per game in the AHL couple guys on the Marlies who obviously Belleville got the better of, but out of players to play more than three playoff games this past season, Stephen Halliday was tied for second in points per game and first in the Eastern Conference. Two players on Dallas, former first round pick Maverick Bork was number one. And then there he was in a tie for number two. So it's awesome to see that his hard work and dedication, which you're going to hear the ins and outs of, it's paying off in production on the ice. Oh, yeah. And I went to a bunch of those games in Belleville and obviously followed along with the road games, too. Halliday was Belleville's best player throughout those playoffs, in my opinion. Like he really made an impact all over the ice. So stoked to get to continue to watch his progression. Feels like a common thing we say, but it bears repeating. Great player, better guy. Enjoy our interview next. You're listening to Locked On Senators, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. I love sports. Ross loves sports. Stephen Halliday loves all sports, and you love sports. But NHL and NBA playoffs, they're gone. MLB baseball, the Olympics, that's what we're gearing up for now. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I got to do is open up the app, dream up bets whenever I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers, not just new customers, all customers with a booster bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So you want to get your baseball bets in, go ahead and do that on a daily basis. Or like I always remind you guys, now's the time to start looking into some future bets. If you think you got an idea of who's going to win the cup, who's going to be the best NBA team, who's going to win awards, Get those bets in now so you can have your long-term investments added to your FanDuel portfolio. Check it out today, guys. FanDuel.com slash locked on and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Today's episode is also brought to you by our great friends at the Glebe Central Pub. The GCP, where the vibes are free, they are all in on the Olympics. They specifically love the Team Canada soccer maybe not the drones and all that but what they do love is when this team gets on the pitch the women's national team doing their thing on the field two and oh they can make it three and you can be there at the glebe central pub at 779 bank street with a whole host of soccer fans here in our nation's capital so get to the 779 bank street have a pint have a special have a a chocolate milk if you're kevin Hemena, but make sure that you bring the absolute vibes to represent team canada and their Olympic pursuit. So go check them out, whether it's for dinner or every Saturday night when they have live music at the pub. There's always a seat for you at the GCP. The vibes are free. We love our friends at the Glebe Central Pub, and you can go check them out on social media as well. Show them some love on their Instagram and their Twitter accounts, Glebe Central Pub. You can find out when new specials happen. They had a uh, TSN 1200 was broadcasting from there for uh, yesterday so that was super cool there's always something going on at the glebe central pub and on august 1st this thursday it is their five-year anniversary live music and a whole lot more drinks and appetizers go ahead there 779 bank street and let them know that locked on senator sent you the vibes are free at the gcp all right now here's our chat with stephen halliday All right, we now welcome a very, very special guest back to Locked On Senators for the sixth time. It's Belleville Sends Ford, top Sends prospect, Stephen Halliday. What's going on, man? How's your summer been? Pretty good. Just uh, kind of doing the same thing as last summer. And uh, yeah, it's been pretty good so far. So what is that? I know you went to development camp again. We thought you were too good to be there last year. You and Tyler Boucher really kind of elevated your play this summer. Did you feel like one of the vets there that you've been through it now three times? Yeah, no, it's it's all. I was I was planning on going to Ottawa anyway, so it was cool. I like, just uh, 
get like organized skates and stuff. Belzy ran us through like a Belleville, uh, Belleville patent practice. So I kind of, I was kind of excited. I knew all the drills, so I was, I wasn't scared to go to the front of the line, but, um, no, yeah, it was a good time. I mean, just kind of getting to see all like, cause I'm still buddies with all those guys just cause a couple of them or I've been to three development camps before. So it was good just to kind of connect with all, uh, all the call, a lot of the college guys when I was a, dinners and stuff so um brought the couple of the swedes pd and, and and wally along so it was definitely fun yeah that's a good crew uh you mentioned to us before we started recording that you're doing your training at ohio state why'd you decide to to go back there for the training in the off season yeah no um i i've always kind of just uh went to different spots just to try to like see what different people say or like what i can add to my game but i got a really good strength coach here his name's taylor and um I, I like him a lot and i was talking with rob and jeremy and they think it's a great spot and so um if they if it, they also like uh just been feeding me information and, and lifts and stuff so um yeah no i got a couple pro guys that like just we've all graduated so it's kind of cool just to break get us all back here and like raise the compete level because at the end of the day all of, like the guys who graduated ohio state are trying to you know make to the nhl and are you guys messing around at the other facilities in there too? I know you're a big tennis guy. Are you sneaking around and getting some reps in? Yeah, for sure. We were playing a couple of me, Thie Sing, um, Tate Singleton, and um, Jake Dunlap. Like we kind of got like a good like a little power ranking system going that we're all like playing each other. Um, but yeah, no, it's been good. I've uh, I've a winning record this summer, but I lost yesterday, so not not too happy right now. But um, uh, definitely like a fun like side activity to do like after we lift and skate like we'll probably take a couple hours and then just go over to like the tennis courts and kind of cool that it's just like it's pretty like died down around campus here so it's a lot like no traffic it's unbelievable nobody's really using any of the courts because usually they're hard to like get out get out and so it's cool like that what's your specialty in tennis are are you a big serve guy or are you a drop shot guy you got the backhand going what's uh i, I want to get next time i introduce you as a tennis player i don't want to say not a server or not a drop yeah, shot yeah. guy so i want to make yeah. sure i'm set here the serves a work in progress that should be okay. one of my weapons considering how tall I'm. um my backhand's pretty good because i'm a lefty and just kind of the repetitive motion of uh yep. shooting pucks kind of like not like the same thing but it is the same thing so my back end's pretty good, but it's, it's pretty flat, so it um, it's hard to like return. Nice. What was missing in your game yesterday? What what do we need to be better at tomorrow? Ah, uh, ch- uh, choking under the pressure. I we were tied five five in both of our uh, sets, and I like got broken for the first time on serve both times, like serving to tie it five five. So that'd be just uh, not letting the pressure get to me there. Come on, man. I, one of my questions going to scratch that one out saying, how did the playoff pressure help you? But clearly it's still working. Yeah, in progress. Tennis, tennis is so much harder than playing in front of it's uh, playing harder than the Belleville fans. It's a lot easier with all, uh, all of them cheering for you. And you're out there on the court, just um, bad mouthing yourself all the time after you miss shots. Oh, that's funny, man. Well, I want to get into the season that was, but you mentioned tennis. Are you an Olympic guy? I know you're you're following the tennis tour all the time. Like, is that your event too at the Olympics, or how do you watch over the next couple of weeks? Yeah, um, you know, I didn't get the invite from my parents to go over to the tennis uh, in Paris. So they're there. Damn. Yeah, I got a, got a tough tough no invite. They're going for two weeks, so I'm not sure Rob and Jared would like that taking two weeks off. But um, yeah, like. Uh, I'm taking it. I'm, I'm not going to go to the Olympics with my parents just to get like, we'll just go with them training, just grinding instead of going to the Olympics for a, uh, for a fun two weeks. But no, uh, Credit to you. yeah, definitely following along. Um, I think there's Nadal played Djokovic today. So it was like, those, those are two like all time greats. So we were, we were lifting during the time, but it, I'm not sure. It's not too sure. I would have wanted to watch that one considering Nadal did not the greatest match, but yeah, definitely following along. And isn't that at Roland Garros? Like, isn't that where he's kind of king? Yeah, so that that's the whole, like, um, storyline going into was, like, could Nadal have, like, Cinderella story because he's just been so good there over the last Interesting. Yeah, the, the answer's no. No spoilers, but the answer's no. He's out. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we know you're you're born in Canada, but you've lived in the States for a long time. Like who are you cheering for at the Olympics? Um yeah, I don't I don't really know. I'm not really don't really have like uh like I like watching um just like Zverev or like kind of the top guys like Alcaraz is always guys. fun to watch, but yeah. I wouldn't consider myself like um huge uh like just a fence sitter, eh? Right? You just like yeah, greatness. Exactly. Like I'll watch I'll watch all the, like the matches or whatever kind of. I like the underdogs cuz um the, ta- the Olympics is only two best of three, so sometimes the underdogs uh, True. get a couple sneaky wins just because it's um, sometimes the top guys don't have their best uh, games. Yeah, well, let's get let's get back to hockey talk here. Um, that was that was talking tennis on the Lockdown Center's <laughs> podcast. Um, Ross mentioned you're one of the older guys at Dev Camp. What's it like coming in, uh, knowing you already kind of have an idea of what Dev Camp's going to be like, and getting to see fresh faces and meet some new players in the Sen system? Yeah, no, it was definitely cool just to see like uh, like you got those highly touted guys like Yakbachuk, seeing how skilled he was, and then. Um, see a couple of the USHL guys getting picked, um, you know, we're already chirping their colleges that they were on to nice. like more in uh, Montgomery, but, um, yeah, it's definitely fun to get hands on there. And then obviously like it's the first development camp with, uh, the new management. So definitely cool to just get in and kind of like see, see them and, and kind of just interact with them more because it, it never hurts. Uh, we know that you and uh, Blake Montgomery's older brother are tight. What's the scouting report on the Sens' uh, fourth round pick, Blake? Yeah, no, he's re- he's a big guy, like um, lengthy, great wheels for a big dude, uh, um, and got some soft mitts. So he'll be fun. He's a guy that's fun to watch. Like uh, like a lot of stuff, like it's flashy, and I, th- I think he'll have a big year in the USHL this year. Yeah, your your words to me on draft day was speed and silky. I like yeah. when you use when you use silky to describe a player, especially one who's got six four size. Uh, that's a pretty big compliment. Speaking of size, uh, I don't think there was a defenseman under six three. How is that as a forward out there for that week of Dev Camp? Yeah, no, you know, um, uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, for me. It's definitely different just because I'm usually looking down at guys and I'm not used to looking up at all of them, but. No, yeah, they definitely went with um, the size this year, so it's definitely cool just to see everyone out with Shelly. Everyone's getting a little edge work in. So, Shelly's but... coming on in a couple weeks. We're, oh, we'll yeah, reach out beforehand and get He's not bad. I don't think he's too much, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I uh, love Shelly, awesome. so, yeah. She, you know what she said to me? She said, can we go till August? I don't have much of a voice in July. Yeah, no, she's... she's, she's I, I can't believe how... Uh, how she does it it's it's incredible she's on the ice for like four hours every like maybe even longer every day and she's got like countless people but um you know i i went and stayed last year for a long time and worked with her a lot and i saw my seating improved and then i kind of like don't reinvent the wheel like uh i went back down and skated with her again i think my skating's on a lot better even this summer so um i'm definitely i definitely owe a lot to her and she's obviously the best in the biz because i've been to like countless skating coaches and um she's like the best one that's for me that i've ever worked with so what separates a good coach from a bad coach when it comes to skating is it certain drills that she runs or the way that she explains them yeah i mean she does a bit of both i mean um they're obviously a little bit of baggers like McEwen was skating with us and uh he was glad there was extra bodies the second week uh there's camp just because she runs through, runs us through the ringers but um i felt like shelly the biggest thing was whether what drills were doing or what not drills were doing i felt like i got a lot more comfortable in like every position on the ice whether it be like yeah, on like in the corners, like being on stronger on my edges, or like just having more control over my ski skating, and I feel like that just translated to like with the puck, without the puck. But I also think she does a good job incorporating just like thinking about what we do a lot in the games and and kind of adding them to the drills. A lot of skating coaches are just like work on your stride, making sure it's long, or like you know putting a lot of stress on your hips all the time or in your hip flexors. So I think. Um, she definitely has a really unique approach, and and I don't and I think there's uh, nobody best in the biz. And she always has ice. Oh, that's one thing I'll say. Do you want to ski with Shelly for five hours a day? She'll be right there with you. So, um, yeah, she's she's the best. Now, with the skating coach, is does she kind of have one like? blanket system and way she wants everyone to skate or is she looking at every player and being being like 
you need to skate this way because of your body size and your positioning or whatever, and you need to do this. Like, is she fine tuning each player or is she like, hey, I want everyone skating this exact way? I'm curious how that kind of shapes up. Yeah, no, she's fine tuning every, every single player just to uh, like to be the best version of themselves. And I feel like a lot of players are saying that nowadays it's not really like comparing themselves to certain players right. and, and stuff. I think a lot of players are starting to do that. And um, I think for me, like, I know I'm never going to be like that, like, but I think being the fastest version of myself is a big thing. And I think she fine tunes him. Oh, uh, like, um, Sabrango was skating with us. Donovan used it with us in Belleville. Like his skating's gone so much better since the last time I saw him. And he's been working with Shelly. Nice. He's been driving like three hours every day to, or every couple of days just to work with Shelly for two hours. So, um, you know, it's just kind of, you, you Stuff like that is just which how good Shelly is. That's awesome. I love that little nugget on Donovan, who just feels like he's one of the hardest workers there is, right? In the gym, we had uh, his old um, play-by-play guy in Kitchener on, and he was just raving about the work ethic and what he brings. What was it like walking into that room with Donovan and the rest of the Belleville Sens turning pro after the end of the college year? I always wonder what the dynamic is like when you join a team that is, at that point, grinding every single night to try to clinch that playoff spot. Yeah, it was actually, it was, it was really, uh, it wasn't too bad just because I knew a lot of like the kid, the guys, like I knew, um, I knew PD, knew Reeser, I lived with Igor, who's a big voice in the locker room, so that helped so much. Um, Bonjo was just traded, Reeser was just traded, so I kind of came in at the same time as those guys. Me and Bonjo um, hung out all the time, pretty much every day, so just like me and him grew pretty close, and we ended up being line mates, which was even more cool, and then I sat beside Kerr, who's like unbelievable guy like helped me so much and and learning from Heisey ended up coming down a couple of weeks after I got there and like learning from him like a lot of them were like you never know how it's gonna be just because you know you're going in and it's like a lot different than college whether it's like you're going in with it's a business and stuff so you never really know like how guys are gonna like you know respond or like stuff like that but I felt like a lot of them were just really really good with me wanted me to succeed and then obviously like help me a lot because I I try to soak in as much information as I could every day like whether it's like Belzy was harping on me to win battles and 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 making sure I'm going to the net because I was playing a little bit of perimeter game and he's one of the guys that just tells you how it is straight up and I feel like those are the best type of coaches just because um if they don't tell if you don't know what you're not doing right then how are you supposed to fix it so um, he definitely uh, helped me a lot there too, even Belzy and stuff like that. Worked with the video coach CD, so definitely um, the locker room and the coaching staff helped me so much. What's going through your mind during this, Sally? If people are watching on YouTube, it is like full archery mode. It looks like there. <laughs> yeah, and it was the f- yeah. I was I I got sent a little clip of Igor's, and they were making fun of me for not scoring in the regular season. So yep, um, I was pretty fired up to get like the one goal, maybe stop the troops coming in, but um no yeah it was definitely like uh it was a pack barn too so i was uh my mom was actually in the crowd but uh she was all bent out of shape because she got like the worst seats in the house apparently she was like at the other side by the by the by like the bench or whatever so um she didn't really get to see it all that well but no she's been it was a surreal moment i would say yeah and that was the first game of round two right yep versus cleveland yeah so was that a little a little extra, especially going back to Ohio after you just finished your college yeah. career there? It just feels like such a funny uh, parallel. No, yeah, it was cool. We actually went to Cleveland um, for uh, like an outdoor game. We played at the Brown Stadium, so um, it was cool. Like I went to kind of a couple of same like coffee spots I would go to with the guys, or like um, definitely uh, like kind of knew the city pretty well, but nothing like it was so much different playing in front of that many people, like even in Laval, just is pretty cool. You, you mentioned you heard Igor's clip talking about you. He was telling us when you came in, everyone was, was impressed with how you were able to transition from college to the pro game in the AHL. But what he would mention is he was like, we couldn't get Halliday to shoot the puck. Now we know you're a disher, but you always wanted to pass it to your teammates, which I mean, Hey, new guy in the room, you're trying to set guys up, but when did it kind of click for you or you felt comfortable enough to be like, look, 
if I got a good shot, I got to take it. Because, again, obviously, I know you're a disher. Everybody knows you're a disher. But you got a, one heck of a shot, too. So when when did it kind of sink in that you were like, all right, if I got the shot, I got to start taking them? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I started off playing with Igor, and I knew he had, like, he has a really good shot. Yeah, that's so a guy I, you want to feed. Yeah. It's a righty lefty too, so it's a lot easier just to uh, like find, like try to find him there. But um, I definitely didn't have like I wasn't like I felt like I had my fair chances to score. Whether maybe it was just like I'm shooting on Devin Levi in Rochester, and I'm like, what the heck? Or I'm, you know, maybe not. Like I felt like the a lot of the guys helped me a lot. Like I remember Cleveland. We were playing, I don't know, I think it was the first period. We were down on nothing in game four. We needed to win this game. Sharks comes up to me on the jaw. It's like, Hallie, I'm going to screen the goalie, shoot the puck right off the jaw. And I'm like, nice. say less, Sharks. Say less. <laughs> Sharks snaps it back. I'm like, thanks, Sharks. Now I don't have to go all the way down and break it out. Guys, on real on draws. Um, then I just get the puck. It looks like the worst shot ever, but Sharks just screamed the, sh- the crap out of um, Jack Greaves, who played on real, and uh, just, like, wasn't even, like, a really great shot. I just I – f- I figured out a lot of them was just, like, if you can shoot it through screens and stuff, which is kind of how I scored my first one, too. Yeah. Um, it's just – that's kind of how, like, you need to play. Not really waiting for the first shot, but, um, but definitely just kind of, you know – shooting through screens or like traffic it makes it a lot different or quick getting it off quick so um definitely that that was probably a big part of it too that's what i do in beer league too hallie but uh the only difference is it's because i have no vision or timing so i just grip it and rip it and and sometimes it goes in yeah no exactly that's that's kind of what i need to get back to and set up the <laughs> perfect shot all right you you've got shelly kettles for the skating if you need a shooting coach i'm here for you yeah i'll get you going <laughs> yeah um, so just the, we talked about the transition already, but how much is this going to help push you into training camp next year where this is your first NHL camp, right? The college kids don't come. How much are you looking forward to getting on the ice with the big boys in September? Yeah, no, it, it'll be pretty cool. Like I was planning on going up a little early just so I could, you know, feel out like just like the pace and stuff and maybe some of the scrimmages or something they're doing before, but um, definitely going to be like a whirlwind, just kind of not really knowing what a camp really is, but um i was talking to a couple like mason loy went to bruins main camp and then um just kind of picking other people's brains about it so uh, i don't know what i'm how i'm gonna take it or whatever yet but i I think it'll be cool and and obviously just being on the ice with batherson to chuck norris um timmy obviously like sanderson like seeing all those guys and and kind of just like trying to take away what they do really good and, and kind of just learn learn what why they're so good and, and kind of what they do. So um, it'll definitely be fun. I heard it's going to be a tough training camp, but I'm um, trying to prepare like in the summer. So that's not really a shock to me when I get there. <laughs> yeah, we've heard Travis Green runs a pretty tough training camp. I'm sure you've heard that as well. Roommate. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, hey, hey is, is Hallie working hard this summer or what? Working hard. <laughs> <laughs> Is he one of the guys beating me on the tennis courts? No, I'm trying to help. We're trying to teach Willie a little bit more. He, he's getting into it. He's getting pretty good, actually. So More of a pickleball guy, though, right now? Uh, no, I'd say Willie's getting – Willie's. we were all taking up tennis, so we haven't played much pickleball, but um, he's probably most improved player right now. Oh, he's that's good. Yeah. Hey, as award. long as your name's in the mix for any award, you got to feel good about that. So we like yeah. that. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So your plan is to just train at Ohio State the rest of the summer, come up uh, around Labor Day and, and get things rocking and rolling? I was planning on coming up August 21st, I think. Um, nice and early. Just time with Cher and, and Rob. And then um, I think I don't, I think rookie camp starts at some point. True. So do that too. So it'll be nice to get games under my belt before I go into main camp. And are we thinking 83s, the, the number still? Yeah, whatever they whatever they give me. Whatever they Doesn't give you, eh? yeah. yeah. Whatever you guys want, just whatever you guys want. Hey, um, go I, in. Hey, go in. Sixty six is in your stall. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think um, any number suggestions in Belleville. I think I'm going seventeen. Just stick with it. But love uh, it. 
research yeah. that I had to buy on like a Rolex to get 19. So not, not, not happening. 17's hey, a great number. <laughs> this guy thinks I am, but wait, who, who <laughs> asked for a Rolex? Reese. Oh right? my goodness. Come on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, you know what? You're better. You look better in 17 anyways. Nice big yeah. number. Yeah, exactly. So just gonna... uh, final, final question for me. We're about to chat with Hoyt Stanley as well. And uh, last summer he told us that growing up, his parents got him to wear 88 because it was a big number and it felt he made him look bigger. Do you think there's any validity to that? I don't know. What number is standard these days? Five. So they didn't, he didn't get it at college. Uh, okay. Yeah. He goes, uh, he goes to Cornell. So Cornell. They don't even, they don't even get last names on the back of their jerseys. Are you, you really? Yep. Yeah, let him know. That is wild. How are we supposed to know who's who out there? Yeah, I know. Um, you got to know the numbers. L- learn something new every day. Yeah, that's what I remember watching. But also give Stanner, ask Stanner about Sunday Church. Sunday Church, we will. Noted. Hey, he, he's just an all-time good guy. Eh? He was going to yeah, come on yeah. with us. He's yeah, like, hey, he can I push it? He's like, can I push it one hour? I'm just out for dinner. We click his Instagram story. He's in Tuscany. I was like, dude, we can do it. We can do it when you get back. Like, there's no no rush at all. Yeah, no, he's a great dude. He, we all like go out to dinner and like uh, went to like hockey sushi or something. And we're all uh, like a couple of the OHL guys were there too. Like, we're all like uh, chirping each other about every league and what team would beat each other in which league. And right, they thought they're playing on. They played on Oshawa, so. I guess like London played Oshawa and then um, Jorian won the Mem Cup. So they're all yep. just giving it to each other and it's funny to watch. So definitely, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yeah. You got to ask Taylor about Sunday Church. That's, he is a sick training group in the summer too. Yeah, no doubt. It's what? Bedard and I guess we'll ask him. Yeah. Just yeah. ask him about Sunday Church. <laughs> Will do. Well, hey, we appreciate you coming on, Hallie. Really, really great to see the evolution from, you know, <laughs> college kid to now heading into your first training camp so i know a lot of sense fans are fired up to see your continued evolution and uh we look forward to seeing you on ottawa in september yeah no i appreciate it thanks for having me on guys stick taps to holiday for joining us really fun conversation with him and just a good dude who you can tell is so passionate about the game of hockey and it's going to be fun seeing him at training camp for the first time right these college kids don't get that experience right off the bat after their draft like the junior kids do and rookie camp for the first time, Ross. And being a double overager when he was selected, like he's Timmy's age, right? Like even though he was drafted two years later, he's a guy who should be able to make an impact in that tournament as well. And to me on paper, he's probably the number one center in Belleville just based on the offensive upside that he has. Sure, if a guy like Adam Gaudet's playing the middle of the ice, those 26, 28 years old, but in terms of exciting prospects, him and Zach Stapchuk are kind of a toss up right now. And it's going to be fun seeing those two in a friendly competition throughout this upcoming season. Pilsy, any final thoughts on today's show? Final thoughts for me is just another reminder. Ross already mentioned it, but ring, a ring of honor season is just around the corner for us. We're going to do things a little differently with this ring of honor, but we're still looking for topic ideas. If you guys have good topic ideas, let us know on Twitter, YouTube, wherever you can reach us. Let us know if you guys have fun Ring of Honor topic ideas. And I will be on vacation starting Wednesday, so we might not get the tweets out in terms of the podcast dropping. So just make sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Click the notification bell, and you will know when new episodes go live. Because despite whether I'm on vacation in Alaska or if Pilsy's in Fort Lauderdale, We are always bringing it your team every day here on LOSP. Already excited for October, but also excited for a lot of great content. Send Central Citizen with Julio coming up on Wednesday. And then on Friday, we will look back at the 2018 draft and how the Senators fared six years later. That's it for us today. Have a great rest of your day or evening whenever you're listening to this. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been another edition of the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day.